Good morning, everyone. Hope you're okay. Good morning to you, anyway. I want to do a talk now um, on the anatomy of insanity that I wrote for Hermes magazine. And I'll put the uh, link to Hermes magazine at the end. It's well worth, worth looking into. It's an online magazine. And I'll start with a quote from H.P. Blavatsky. The unconsciously prophetic fin de siècle, in short, is the long foreseen fin de cycle. When according to Manjanata Sutra, justice will have died, leaving as its successor blind law, and as its guru and guide, selfishness. When wicked things and deeds will have to be regarded, as meritorious and holy actions as madness. And John Lennon writes, our society is run by insane people for insane objectives. I think we're being run by maniacs for maniac lens. I think I'm liable to be put away as insane for expressing that. That's what's insane about it. Insanity then has crept upon us almost imperceptibly, and in modern society has become accepted as normal in many ways. This sadly is the result of a world that has divorced itself from spirituality. It is a tragic state of mind that has caused the unnecessary suffering and death of billions of people over many centuries. What does it mean to lead a balanced and sane life? Certainly not by believing that violence can solve problems on any level. It is a truism that we must learn to love and respect each other and look for the good in our fellow human beings. We must also ask us, ask why so many people follow the path of anger and violence. There's an increase in the number of cases of murder where the victim is killed randomly for no apparent reason except that the perpetrator was suffering from some kind of mental illness or believed that they were doing it for some cause that they promoted. A cause is negated if it necessitates the death of even one person. Think of religions like Buddhism and Jainism prohibit taking the life of even a fly unnecessarily and compare that to the disregard for life in modern society. Jim Morrison in the song The End said, lost in a Roman wilderness of pain and all the children are insane. All the children are insane. Gangs of youths and even children roam the streets vandalizing property, fighting and even killing each other with knives or guns. In the USA and other countries, gun crimes are common and there are many instances of deaths caused by an individual going on a shooting rampage. These are mostly young men who perform these terrible acts for seemingly trivial reasons. It is interesting to try to look into why so many people, so many young people in particular, prefer to ally themselves with forces of destruction rather than creativity. Of course, there are many young people who are living valuable and productive lives. And it is usually a minority who wreak havoc and terrorize a neighborhood without even being able to explain why they do it. Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist teacher who recently passed on, wrote, we are here to awaken from our illusion of separateness. We are here to awaken from our illusion of separateness. The fact that we imagine that we are separate from each other is the key to the state of the world today. The selfishness that sets one individual or nation against another. This illusion of separateness, this great die heresy. We have to come to realize that behind our masks, the mask that we create, there is just one spirit that we all share beyond the dramas of life that we create. Fear is one of the greatest enemies in this respect. As a society, we fear each other, whether as individuals, groups, or even nations. Fear is fed by the media. We are taught to look up other, other human beings, religions, cultures, and countries with suspicion. 
negativity and selfishness is encouraged on all levels. Selfishness creates the cult of the personality. This leads to people being easily offended. And this is a common reaction which seems to be becoming more prevalent today. A sense of humour and the ability to laugh at oneself are very important in this world. We have to see the transient personality in perspective and understand it is not who we are. There's an ancient Indian saying, the smile you send out returns to you. But nowadays, the recipient seems to prefer to keep it. Out in the countryside, people are much more likely to be friendly with the kind of natural environment. In towns and cities, there's often a suspicion of the motives of the one who is brave enough to smile at a stranger. The problem is that people who are awake or awakening spiritually can see clearly what is happening in the world. As most people are blind to this and regard someone who is acting under the guidance of the higher self as insane. Their view of life is severely limited. <clears throat> as Plato says, Heaven sent madness is preferable to man made sanity. To those who take their sustenance from the spirit, <clears throat> the actions of those wallowing in the mire of material thought may seem illogical and misguided. <clears throat> Excuse me. They see behind the facade, beyond the confusion, to the pure sunlight of truth. <clears throat> the majority fail to comprehend this way of looking at life, content as they are to be guided by second-hand thoughts and ideas. Therefore, what most people regard as insanity is actually sanity on a higher level. Rumi, the Sufi poet, writes, run from what's comfortable, forget safety, live where you fear to live, destroy your reputation, be notorious. I've tried prudent planning long enough. From now on, I'll be mad. And H. people of Atsky writes, be what he may, once the student abandons the old and trodden highway of routine and enters upon the solitary path of independent thought, Godward, he is a theosophist, an original thinker, a seeker after the eternal truth with an inspiration of his own to solve the universal problems. So it's not just a, a member who joins, somebody who joins a theosophical society who regards as a theosophist, it's someone who's living a certain, living the life under the guidance of their divine self. To develop clear seeing, we have to disentangle our minds from the kind of thoughts and ideas that have been given to us by a world that generally disbelieves in anything really spiritual and thinks itself to be mentally balanced by following rules and regulations based upon this great dire heresy of separateness. The world is much different to one who is at least trying to have an inspiration of their own, and they almost invariably are misunderstood by the majority of their fellow human beings, who are mainly living their lives on borrowed thoughts. It is when people take time to be alone and to meditate on what it really means to be human that they may gain insights into their true self. Everyone has this potential, but the tragedy is that few people make use of it. As is said in the voice of the silence, translated by H. P. Blavatsky, alas, alas, that all men should possess a liar, be one with the great soul, and that possessing it, a liar, should so little avail them. Behold how like the moon, reflected in the tranquil waves. A liar is reflected by the small and by the great, is mirrored in the tiniest atoms, yet fails to reach the heart of all. Alas, that so few men should profit by the gift, the priceless boon of learning truth, the right perception of existing things, the knowledge of the non-existent. Real compassion is the result of trying to awaken oneself and others to an awareness of the higher self so that they can proceed in life by self 
induced or self-devised efforts towards the same goal. It may be that what we think of as a goal is merely a stepping stone, stone to a higher plane of being. But we must go on step by step towards the endless end. That society at the moment is confused physically, mentally, and morally is not hard to see. Because the lower aspects of our mind create countless distractions that prevent us from knowing what really matters and what is essential in this transient life. What really matters to us all. That we should learn to love each other is no sentimental statement. We are in, indeed all brothers and sisters in reality, members of the same family, the human race. Seeming differences are an illusion conjured up by the lower aspects of our mind, which is unable to process unity and derives its sustenance from division. In fact, there is only one consciousness that animates us all, and it becomes visible to the spiritual eye of the seeker. When the mind is illumined and becomes serene, we see the beauty in others, and we learn to love the good in them. To most, that goodness is buried deep by the lower emotions and turbulent thoughts. But it is there waiting to surface if it is only stimulated by attention to those things that really matter in our lives, the, one that make, the ones that make us more humane and appreciative of the beauty and wonder of life, which is there if we only really look for it. H.P. Blavatsky writes in The Origin of Evil, as mankind multiplies and with its suffering, which is the natural result of an increasing number of units that generate it, sorrow and pain are intensified. We live in an atmosphere of gloom and despair, but this is because our eyes are downcast and riveted to the earth with all its physical and grossly material manifestations. If instead of that, man proceeding on his life journey looked not heavenward, which is but a figure of speech, but within himself, and centred his point of observation on the inner man, he would soon escape from the coils of the great serpent of illusion. From the cradle to the grave, his life would then become supportable and worth living, even in its worst phases. For humanity to regain its sanity, it must look to the one thing that brings us together, that unites us, and that is the spiritual nature that we all share. This is the only true equality. Thank you very much for listening. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Peace on earth and goodwill to all beings. Which is needed just at the moment, of course. Peace is always needed. Love and peace to everyone.